Okay, the mid-segment theorem, also known as the median theorem, I suppose, right? Because the word median and mid-segment are synonymous, and uh, the mid-segment is simply defined as the segment that goes from the middle of all right, let me draw that in a different color here. It goes from the middle of that leg to the middle of this leg. And notice the trapezoid doesn't have to be isosceles. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. So that tells us that segment AM isn't necessarily congruent to segment DN. <clears throat> uh, this, by the way, this mid-segment also occurs in triangles as well. You can see a mid-segment in a triangle, and the theorem works very similarly. It goes from the midpoint to the midpoint, just like that. All right, but let's focus on uh, the median or the mid-segment of a trapezoid, since we're right in the middle of our quadrilateral unit. And let's see, the, the theorem around mid-segments is pretty, pretty interesting. Let me slide this up a little bit here. I've got... The median, or the mid-segment, of a trapezoid is parallel to each base. All right, so that's pretty important. It means this is parallel to everything. All right, they're all parallel. And its length is one-half the sum of the length of the bases. So its length, segment MN, is equal to one-half the sum of the length of the bases, the bases being the top and the bottom. So the mid-segment theorem literally says that segment MN is parallel to segment AD, which is parallel, of course, to segment BC. And it says that, this is kind of like more important, I think, <coughs> that the length of the mid-segment is half of the sum of the two bases. It's basically equal to the the average of the two bases, if you will. All right, so let's use this thing. We'll answer some questions about it. Find the length of the mid-segment of this trapezoid. So right now we're looking for the length of the mid-segment right in here. All right, and we already said that the rule is pretty simple, right? The mid-segment is equal to one-half of the sum of the bases. So we're looking for segment AB. I know the length of segment NK and ML. All right, so all I want to do is just add those two together. Uh, let's see, that's going to be 27.6. So 27.6 is that sum. And I cut that in half. And let's see, I get, oh, I don't know. 13.8, I guess. That sounds right. Yeah, so that's 13.8 units. All right, that is the length of our mid segment. And remember what that mid segment means. That's another word for median. Median, we've used before when we were looking at uh, data and stuff like that. Mean, median, mode, and range. That is kind of implies the uh, the word middle, right? It's cutting each each leg in half, and that's why it's parallel, and that's why it holds true with this idea. Number two. All right, find the length of segment TU. All right, so we're going to use the same idea, the same theorem. We're going to say that the mid-segment, in this case it's YZ, is equal to one-half of the sum of the bases. <coughs> so we know that this time we know the mid-segment is 7.2. Segment TU, uh, I don't know, so I'll just, I guess, call that X. Uh, maybe I'll, Yeah, I guess I'll call it X. If there were another X here, I might avoid that, but plus 9.4. Okay. Uh, a couple different ways to do this. What I'll probably do is, I don't like sometimes having fractions. So I'm going to get rid of that fraction. I'm going to uh, multiply both sides by 2. To undo a fraction of 1 half, I just multiply everything by 2. 
All right, and when I do that, here's what I'm left with. Let's see, on the left-hand side, it's 14.4. And watch this. On the right-hand side, the 2 and the 1 half cancel out, leaving us with just whatever's on the inside, x plus 9.4. All right, and then one more step here. We'll subtract 9.4 from both sides. And we get, uh, oh, I guess that's 5, huh? x is 5. So uh, I'm not going to highlight that. I'm actually going to do a little bit better. 5 is equal to the length of segment TU, just so we know what x actually means. And as I've done in, in many other cases, it's never a bad idea to check your work. All right, so let's just check to make sure that 7.2 is, in fact, equal to uh, 5 plus 9.4 divided by 2. Notice. Multiplying by one half is the same as dividing by two. That's why I can check this this way. All right, so I I do this really quickly. I can do it in my head. Uh, five plus nineteen point four. That's fourteen point four over two. So does seven point two equal fourteen point four over two? Yeah, it absolutely does. That tells me that I'm correct. All right, let's see here. We've got. Uh, we want to find the length of this base down here. That's our task. All right, this one's kind of crazy looking because we have x's in all the terms. So here we go. We're going to say, we're going to keep it really simple here. I'm going to start with my formula. It says the mid segment is equal to half of, let me all write it the other way. It's just for a little bit of variation here. It's equal to the sum of the bases. So it's y, v plus x w divided by 2. Again, it's the same as writing it like this. Nothing different there at all. Multiplying by 1 half or dividing by 2 are exactly the same. Just for a little variation's sake, I'll write it this way. All right, so we plug in all the stuff that we know. We know 33x minus 1 is equal to Let's see, segment YV has a length of 40X plus 1. Segment XW has a length of 25X minus 2, all over 2. All right, so again, there's a 2 on the bottom. I don't want that there. I'm going to probably want to get rid of that. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That clears out this thing. Over here, I need to put that in parentheses. It's 66X minus 2, it's a distributive property. Over here we've got just the numerators left, nothing else. Now just all algebra from here, right? Just multiply or get everything kind of on one side and then you know just kind of get everything together. Right? If, I, if I have x's on both sides I'm going to probably want to use my little trick that uh, that I know that if I'm looking at all of my coefficients of x. And I've got them divided by that equal sign. Keep the, keep the variables, um, let me restate that. Look at the coefficients, right? And this, whatever one's bigger, over here it's 66 and on this side it's 65. So whichever coefficient is bigger, keep that one there and move the other one, the other two in this case, over to it. So we're going to take these and move them over here. The reason I do that is I want to keep the bigger one just to kind of avoid using negatives and stuff. It's if I really if it, if the choice doesn't matter, I'm I'm going to want to use the easier choice. Not necessary, but it's a nice little trick. So let's combine these first. One minus two is negative one. Forty x plus twenty five x is sixty five. So we're going to move this guy. We're going to move him over here. Again, you have choices there. You don't have to do it that way. Uh, 66 minus 65 is just 1. We don't write the 1. Minus 2 is equal to, well, these cancel out, negative 1. Add 2, add 2. X is simply just 1. All right, if X is 1, plug it back in here. So the length of segment WX is equal to 25 times 1 minus 2 which is 23. All right. 
moving right along. And again, if, if, uh, if you wanted to, it might be a really good exercise for you. Check that. Put one in everywhere. Make sure that everything fits together. Or maybe I'll do that really quickly. Remember, the mid-segment has to equal the uh, average of the two uh, the bases. So we go 33 times our x value, which is 1. 33 times 1 is 33 minus 1 is 32. That has to equal 1 half of, let's see, 41 plus 23. Uh, so 32, does that equal half of uh, 64? Does 32 equal half of 64? Yeah, it definitely does. Cool. All right, last one. Again, mid-segment is equal to base plus base over 2. Plug in everything you know. 4x minus 11. 5x minus 23. 25. Uh, what I'm going to do first, as I've done in the past couple problems, is clear the denominator, multiply it by 2. On the left-hand side, I need to distribute that 8x minus 22. Uh, I'm going to simplify this numerator. I get 5x. Uh, maybe I won't simplify. I don't want to do too many steps at once. So now I'm going to simplify the right side. 5x plus 2. And again, look for your coefficient that has the look for your variable expressions that has uh, that has the biggest coefficients. Keep that one where it is. 8 is bigger than 5, so move the 5 over. They cancel, leaving us with, let's see, 3x minus 22 equals 2. Add 22, so 3x equals 24. Uh, divide by 3, divide by 3, I get x is 8. Uh, the problem is find the length of the mid-segment, find the length of the mid-segment, which is hg. hg is given as 4x minus 11, so it's 4 times 8 minus 11. 4 times 8 is 32. Minus 11 is, let's see, 32 minus 11 is 21, right? Yeah, 21. So segment HG is 21 units long. And again, if you wanted to, I'm not going to, but uh, if you wanted to, you can check that to make sure that it fits. So you just plug in, well, I guess I'll do it. Uh, so you plug in uh, 8 right here, so that's 40 minus 23. 40 minus 23, that's 17. And the mid-segment's 21, so does 21 equal half of 17 plus 25? So does 21 equal half of, uh, let's see, was that 42? Does, is 21 half of 42? Absolutely. All right, so again, this is, uh, this is sometimes called the, a median. I, I've always called it a mid-segment. <clears throat> and it doesn't only appear in trapezoids, it also appears over here in triangles. And the, the rule is, is kind of the same, right? Maybe in a different video I'll, I'll focus more of my attention on that, but since we're in the quadrilateral uh, unit right now, uh, we'll focus just on the trapezoids.